It's called Seventh Chords in C 2.0. 2.0. So if you do not have that downloaded and printed out already, uh, pause the video and grab that so that you have all this stuff to refer to as we go along. Okay. All right. So I'm looking at the I'm looking at this handout, and uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing the seven chords that uh, can be derived from the key of C major, building chords in thirds. That means, in this, in this context, it means skipping scale steps. Right? We skip, and then we skip again, and then we finally skip again. All right, so um, the seven different chords in the key of C major, uh, the first chord, which we're gonna give the Roman numeral one, is called a major seventh chord. And the intervals that go into making that chord are the root, the major third, and remember you can count those half steps if you need to. You probably don't need to in the key of C. In a different key, you might need to do it. All right, so it all depends on how familiar with that key you are. But one, two, three, four, okay? There's that, per that major third, okay? The perfect fifth, you probably can pick that out. If you get this sound, it's not the perfect fifth, okay? It's the perfect fifth. And remember we said in, in, in the uh, YouTube about uh, intervals to find the major seventh. Go up the octave and come down a half step. Boom, and you've got a major seventh, okay? There's a C major seventh. Root, major third, perfect fifth, major seventh. And in the key of C, we give that the Roman numeral one. Uh, and in your lead sheets, uh, you're going to see this identified as the letter name or the root of the chord followed by MAJ7. And that's really by far the most common way you're going to see that written out. Okay, we're going to go to the, the two chord now. Okay, my pinky is on the second step of the, of the scale. And again, I'm skipping scale steps. And as I go upward, I'll find the minor third, the perfect fifth, and this time the minor seventh. Notice if I go up the octave, I'm coming down two half steps to derive at that seventh of the chord. And unfortunately, minor seventh is the name of the interval, and it's also the name of the chord. Why did they do that? They shouldn't have done that. But there you have it. So D minor seventh, root minor third, perfect fifth, minor seventh. Now I'm describing this D M I N seven. You're gonna see a little later in this tutorial how uh, there are different ways of writing out minor seventh chords. So we'll get to that in just a few minutes. D minor seventh. Okay, if we go up to the three chord, it just so happens that if we build the intervals off the root, we get all the same kind of intervals. Root, minor third, perfect fifth, minor seventh. So again, we call it a minor seventh chord. Okay? We're working our way up to the four chord, Roman numeral four. Okay, in this case, F and another major seventh. The intervals, major third, one, two, three, four. Perfect fifth, not this, but this. There's the triad, and go up the octave, come down a half step, major seventh, F major seventh, the four chord in the key of C. The five chord, very important, and I want you to really have a firewall between this type of chord and a major seventh chord, because sometimes people get confused between those two. So this is called G seventh, more formally, it could be called G dominant seventh. And here are the intervals. The root, the major third, and you're getting good at figuring out which is the major third as opposed to the minor third. The perfect fifth, and the minor seventh. One, two. Okay, much more active, much more biting kind of a sound than a major seventh chord has. it's got some bite to it whatever however you want to describe it this chord will be described as just a 
the root name, in this case G, followed by seven. And you should call it G dominant sevenths. Jazz musicians will often just call it a G7. Your guitar player friend, or if you're a guitar player, you might be, you know, you might be used to just calling it a G7 chord. They mean the same thing, okay? But it's not a G minor seventh, and it's not a G major seventh. It's a G seventh because it's got that lowered seventh interval, and it's got this tritone, G7, okay? A minor seventh just so happens that all of the intervals above A are going to work out to be the same as our other minor seventh chords, okay? Minor third, perfect fifth, minor seventh. Finally, one more, uh, the chord that's built on the seventh step of the scale. This is called B minor seven flat five, okay? Uh, sometimes it's called half diminished, which would be the root name, followed by an, uh, an O with a diagonal line through it. So it should not be confused with a diminished chord. It does not have all the same intervals as diminished. It's got minor third, flat five, that's where the name comes from, and then the minor seventh. And it's actually a chord that we're gonna use a lot in our, in our, uh, in our standard tunes. It comes up pretty frequently. Okay, so the seven different chord types and the ways that you might see them written out uh, on a lead sheet, uh, if you practice any other scale, you're going to find the same chord types, minor seven, major seven, etc., uh, but just on different, different roots. So if I go up to the key of F, one chord is major seventh, two chord is minor seventh, three chord minor seven, four chord major seven, chord dominant seven, six chord uh, minor seven, seven chord minor seven flat five. Okay, here's something you can do and, and uh, we're going to maybe combine this with this the scale fingering chart. So that's another one. If you don't have that one uh, printed out right now, please pause and make sure you're referencing that because this is something that um, you can do on the piano. I'm not really sure if you can really do this on any other instrument except maybe the vibes or something like that. But I could play my C major seventh chord with my left hand, like that. And then I'm going to finger a C major scale as I'm sounding the chord, okay? Okay, a nice sound, all right? Uh, the major scale over the major seventh chord. Here's, here's something that I can do that's very interesting also. I can play the two chord, or the D minor seventh chord, and I can play my uh, scale starting on the second step of the scale, this time starting on D, and this would be called the Dorian mode, the second mode, okay? Notice the fingering I'm using, same as the C major. One, two, three. Oh yes, for, for those of you who are, are new to this, the fingering on the piano. Your thumb is number one, your pointer is number two, your long finger is number three, your ring finger is four, and your pinky is five. Okay? Different than a string instrument. Okay? So five fingers. All right? So look at your fingering chart. One, two, three, cross. One, two, three, four, cross. Your thumb on the octave. One, two, three, cross. And you can use your five finger for the highest note in the scale. Come back down, cross, cross, cross. Maybe swing your scale. Okay, maybe try uh, uh, randomizing the scale a little bit, you know. Play some, some scale fragments, uh, skip some scale steps. You know? Maybe add a little rhythm to it, too. I want one, two, three.
okay. Something you can do on the piano that you it would take a, a long time to be able to, to do on pretty much any other instrument. So have fun with playing scales over the one chord and the two chord, and uh, then try your hand at improvising. All right, we're moving on to the second line, which uh, is gonna demonstrate the five basic chord types in jazz. And this is a great exercise because you're really, you're gonna know, you're gonna learn a lot of chords and you're gonna really be able to hear the difference between each of the chord types. And now don't get into an argument with your friends in the classical world uh, who describe four basic chord types. We have five basic chord types because we're adding the seventh to all of our chords. So it, it creates chord types that classical music doesn't really recognize. Um, Mozart probably wouldn't have started a, a sonata on a C major seventh chord. All right, so, uh, but we might. So the first chord type that we're gonna be looking at is C major seventh, C M A J seven. Again, the root, the third, the fifth, and the major seventh. Now, we're, as we go from chord to chord, we're gonna be lowering one note at a time. The first uh, variation we're gonna find is called C7, or again, C dominant seventh, and the intervals are gonna be the root, the major third, the perfect fifth, and now the minor seventh. And if we A, B these two chords, wow, they are just night and day, so different. Okay, major seven, dominant seventh, much more of a bite to it. Okay, we're gonna continue on um, minor seventh now because we're gonna lower the third by half step. Root of the chord, minor third, fifth, minor seventh. Okay, those are the intervals that we talked about in the D minor seventh chord also. Okay. You'll see there are three different really common variations on how to describe a C minor seventh chord. C, M, I, N, seven. C, M, seven, small case M, seven. Or C dash seven. And that's probably the most common way that you're gonna see it on lead sheets, is the root name dash seven. It means minor seven. Okay, we're gonna continue on. Uh, C minor seven flat five. And here's Sibelius did me wrong a little bit. It's got the root, the third, now the flat five. I entered a flat there and it called it a lowercase b or low b. Um, okay, that's supposed to be flat five. And then the minor seventh. Okay. And then finally, the diminished chord. Okay, this is a chord that you can't make uh, from just using notes in the major scale. Uh, because all of the intervals are a minor third. So the root of the chord, a minor third, another minor third, all minor thirds, okay? I don't call it, I don't really call it a diminished seventh because uh, if I'm thinking of the diminished scale, it's a weird scale. It has eight notes instead of seven in it. So uh, why would this be the seventh? I don't know. So uh, I just call it a diminished chord. And usually when I sound a diminished chord, I usually like to have four notes in my voicing. Okay, so there are uh, five different chord types. Uh, ask, ask yourself if you can make those five different chord types on different notes of the piano. For example, uh, if I started on G and I played all the white notes, oops, I'm not starting with major seventh. I gotta think of the key of G major. Okay, and then build my one chord or my major seventh chord uh, with the with the major seventh or the F sharp in it. Okay, oh, no, I'm getting that familiar sound of G major seventh. Okay, now I'm lowering one at a time. Lower the seventh, G dominant seventh. Lower the third, G minor seven. Lower the fifth, 